Well, my name is Jeremy Bruin, and I first used a router, in fact this particular one, in 1974. I very quickly learned that the router could do a lot more than just cut grooves. So what is it about a router that makes it so versatile? Well, let's first look at what a router is, and then at what it will do. This is a portable plunging router. Portable because it is handheld, although it can be fixed in the table. If you own a medium or large router, it can still accept quarter inch shank cutters by using reduction sleeves or smaller collets. Now the cutter can also be part of a jig, as these bearing guided cutters rely on a tiny ball race. Always move the router to and from you, never from side to side. So if you want to cut a deep groove, you simply reset the depth on each pass. You can use the router to decorate edges in both traditional and modern styles. When using a radius cutter, it highlights the importance of accurate depth setting, as the cutter profile must flow around the edge of the work perfectly and not dig into the top surface. After the blank has been band sawn, you simply attach the template to it with double-sided tape. You can see that there is a gap of just over two millimetre between cutter and guide bush collar, which represents the amount the template has to be cut over size. The bulk of the cutting relied on my freehand control of the router. With the power turned off, if you plunge to just above the cross and then switch the router on, the image of the rotating cutter will allow you to adjust the position so that it cuts on centre. Router tables often include a sliding mitre fence which is particularly useful for cutting joints such as halvings and tenons, which I'll deal with a little later. Using jigs is routing at its most imaginative, and after you've mastered the basics of routing, I'm confident that you'll want to start making your own jigs. And of course, the pendulum routing jig turns the router into the ads of the 20th century, as it will allow you to cut these attractive fluted dishes in a fraction of the time it would take you to carve them with hand gouges. The table fence acts as a stop for the joint shoulder. And in the case of tenon cheeks, each face is cut in turn. The trick is to allow the blobs on the bench to cool slightly before pressing the workpiece, thus allowing a clean prise off afterwards without the grain lifting. High-speed steel cutters can be honed on an oil stone on the inside edges of the tips.